Greetings everyone, welcome to Hidden Knowledge. My name is Moneybag73 and I will be filling in for JC for this video. For those of you who don't know me, I have been making videos on this incredible phenomenon for two years now and have made over 300 videos. I was so mind blown by the Medell effect in March of 2016 that I stopped making financial videos which I had been doing for six years and have primarily made videos on the Mandela Effect ever since. Okay, so let's get into the changes that we have for you today. The first Mandela Effect change that I would like to cover today is the creation of Adam by God at the Sistine Chapel painted by Michelangelo. Now I know many of you are familiar with this famous piece of artwork. It covers the entire ceiling of the Sistine Chapel and this is just one little section at the top. My entire life, I remember God reaching down to touch Adam's finger in this creation of Adam. Now, I see Adam's hand is higher now, and he's actually, even though his wrist is bent, he's reaching down to touch God's finger, and this is, this is very creepy to me. It just, it looks really off. So I have some examples of how I remember it from other artists' renditions. This book here, strangely enough, I had just finished reading when I became aware of this Mandela Effect. This was recommended to me by a subscriber, and it has the hand of God reaching down towards Adam's hand like I remember on the cover of the book. So I thought that was a really cool synchronicity that I had there. Now in this one here, it's closer to how I remember it. The angle of the arms from God reaching down to Adam in this artist's rendition here. We also have it here with the Muppets. Same type of angle going on. Now I have a few examples of tattoos. You have to wonder why she would have this tattooed on her back with God's hand reaching down towards Adam because that's not how it is on the original. Adam is actually reaching down to, to God now. I mean, it's just totally mind-blowing. I mean, here's God's hand here and Adam's on the left. So you see this over and over again. So really incredible change here we have with Michelangelo's The Creation of Adam. Moving along, number two change that I'd like to discuss today has to do with Barnum's Animal Crackers. I've always known them as Barnum's Animal Crackers my entire life. I ate them as a kid. They came in a little box with a string that they still sell now. And for those of you who don't know, the string was actually to hang it on the Christmas tree. That's why the string was put on the box. These have been around since 1902. So I'd like to you to listen to this here. This is, happens over and over again with the Mandela Effect where you'll have someone be holding something and they'll say it the way that we remember it, those of us experiencing the Mandela Effect, but that's not what it says right in front of them. So watch this here. Okay, <laughs> that was really crazy. Now, I don't know why she's whispering or whatever, but she said Barnum's Animal Crackers. She, for some reason, just didn't pronounce the S at all. She said it like I always remember it. Here's another one. Recently, and I bought some from the supermarket today. Here they are, Barnum's Animal Crackers. They've got a little handle on the top. Same thing, Barnum's Animal Crackers. He just didn't pronounce the S. So here we have a couple of newspapers. We have this one here from uh, 1989 Standard Speaker from Pennsylvania. Nabisco Barnum's Animal Crackers, $2.29. Crackers in special limited edition tins, three, package, three packages of Barnum's Animal Crackers inside. But you can see right on the tin it says Barnum's Animals Crackers. It's been on there for 100 years. So, another really strange change here with the animals crackers. 
one last thing I'd like to point out here with the animal. I have one last article for you here with the animal crackers. There's an, there's, this was from a 1987 Florida newspaper, and they're talking about the 85th birthday of the animal crackers. And throughout the article, they mention Barnum's animal crackers. They never say animals crackers. And then here they say animal crackers have inspired poetry and song. Christopher Morley wrote his poem Animal Crackers in 1917. The Marx Brothers starred in the 1930 Paramount picture Animal Crackers. And Shirley Temple sang Animal Crackers in My Soup in the 1925 movie. Curly Top. So, just such a bizarre thing that you find as you do research on these Mandela effects. There's so much reality residue on all these things that so many of us remember being another way, whether that was in another universe, parallel universe, another reality. There's so many theories. You know, you can you could go all day researching all the different theories. Uh, you know, CERN and all the different theories that there are. Time travel. So here we have a 1924 store display. Barnum's Animal Crackers used this advertisement in 1924. They have a box, it says Barnum's Animals Crackers, and right here below it says take along Barnum's Animal Crackers. So <laughs> go figure, I mean this is just crazy. I always remember Barnum, Barnum's Animal Crackers, but there's always been an S on animal. So before I get to the third and final change, there's a reality residue update that I would like to make everyone familiar with. Luke, I Am Your Father is a huge Mandela effect for many people. They remember in The Empire Strikes Back, Darth Vader saying, Luke, I am your father. Well, in this reality, it's always been, no, I am your father. And you could find James Earl Jones, who was the voice of Darth Vader. You could find him in a couple different interviews where he says, Luke, I am your father. Well, here, recently, we have surfaced a Saturday Night Live skit that Mark Hamill did not long after the movie. Wait a minute, caller. Now, I didn't say that. Darth Vader said it. Just play ball, Hamill. Let's do it. Just play ball. That's All right. <clears throat> Luke. I am your father. <laughs> so with things like this, I just don't understand how people can continue to deny the existence of the Mandela effect, that something has happened, something is happening. I mean, you wouldn't have Mark Hamill saying, Luke, I am your father, if that's not what he remembered from the movie. Why Why is he not reciting, no, I am your father, like, it, like it's in the movie? So just... You know, another mind-blowing piece of reality residue we have here. The final Mandela effect that I would like to cover today is Victoria's Secret. This was always Victoria's Secret for me. And many other people also recall it being Victoria's Secret. However, it's always been Victoria's Secret. And I have a few newspaper articles here that I wanted you to, to see that show my memory of Victoria's Secret. In my entire life, there was no apostrophe S. I had one at the mall near my house where I grew up, and then when I moved, there was one at that mall. This is a really big Mandela effect for me. Here we have the police beat, 5.32 p.m. This is from a 2000 newspaper article. Victoria Secret, South Lake Mall. A victim reported being harassed by a known sus subject. So Victoria Secret, once again. Now on my channel, I did a video on Victoria's Secret and I had people telling me it was always Victoria's Secrets for them. That could be a, a third timeline or a third memory from a third reality. It was always Victoria's Secret like you see here for me but Victoria's Secrets it's always been Victoria's Secret in this reality so you have lots of different things with the Mandela Effect. You can also have you know I find this a lot of times where you have three different memories like Jif, Jif and Jiffy peanut butter. 
I've made videos where I say that it's, you know, it's Jiffy, and people say, no, Jiffy never existed. It was always Jif, but they spell it J-I-F-F -F instead of J-I-F. So you have a lot of these three memories, Cheez-It, Cheez-Its, Cheez-Its, Cheez-Its with a Z, with an S. So you have more than two memories with a lot of these Mandela. Before going, I would like to congratulate JC on reaching 50,000 subscribers on his channel. And I also wanted to say that I think his videos have been a great contribution to the Mandela Effect community here on YouTube. Hey everyone, JC here. I just wanted to take this moment to personally thank Moneybag73 for helping me out in this video. His great research on his channel has produced some great Mandela effects that I have showcased on this channel over the past year plus. I also wanted to thank every single one of my subscribers that helped me get here to 50,000. I am very happy that I have reached that number in such a short period of time. Anyways guys, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching once again and I'll catch you guys on the next one.